And the role of the Jew is to be a light to the Gentiles. And that is why we are an eternal nation. Why are we eternal nation? Why is this? Why did God keep his promise that he preserved us here to this time? We shouldn't be here because as it turns out, the Jewish nation is the only nation that was created by a sovereign act of God. And it cannot be undone. It can't be undone by the United Nations. It cannot be undone by, by, the, by, the, the, by the Russians. It can't be undone by the Obama administration. It cannot be undone. It's a lease. It's locked in the vault in heaven. And the United Nations cannot do anything. The Jews are forever, and God kept his word. And that's why we worship him, and that's why we know him. It's because he kept his promises to Israel. He didn't change his mind. It looked very bleak, but he kept it. But here's the question I, want to, I just want to pose to you. I want you to think about this, because you may not have thought about it before. See, the Jews are an eternal nation. Corporate Israel cannot disappear. Now, I, I want to just one other point you make, because Dr. Evans is so gracious. You was so gracious. I want to just say this. When I talk about anti-Semitism as a church, you should understand that Christians today are deeply embarrassed by this. Lutherans are terribly embarrassed by the behavior of, of, of the founding. They're embarrassed by Booster and Calvin. And they, they, the origin it was a genius origin. But he wrote terrible things about the Jews. They all did, Augustine, everyone. You have to ask the question. The question not is the anti Semites, not anti Semites. But please understand, don't look around thinking that Christians are not embarrassed. They hate this, it bothers them tremendously. But the question what if you say that it's unchristian to be an anti Semite, are you saying Luther is unchristian? No, you understand. But the question is this the Bible tells us, the scripture tells us the following, and that is God doesn't preserve all the Jews, God only preserves those Jews who keep the covenant. Because we internal nation, because we have an eternal message to you, to you, to you, to the world. That's why we have to be an eternal nation. But God is not going to preserve Jews who do not keep the covenant. You'll find this in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7, verse 9, verse 12. It's there openly. You have to have a personal relationship and be obedient to his commandments. I want to ask you this question. As we see today, of course, the Messianic Jews, you meet many Jews who converted to Christianity, whatever they're going to call themselves. Here's the question. Going back to the first century, there's something very odd. Very strange thing is that there were Jews who became Christians. Why didn't God preserve them? It means if Jesus is the Messiah, it means the worst thing you can do is reject him. If Jesus was God and you did, re why is it that we look in history? Because we want to know. I want to be sure. I want to be sure because I got everything at stake here. I look at history and it's very interesting. Sure, you meet Jews who became Christians, but the grandparents were completely religious Jews. It was the chief rabbi said, "Why didn't God preserve the Jews who believed in Jesus?" and the children, that they would still be here as Jews. No, they're gone. Peter's children are gone. Who do we see today as the Jewish people? Those who God kept the promise, and that they did this. And that is they believed in the God of Israel, and they said that Jesus, we wish he was the Messiah, but unfortunately is not. And this is the witness to this day. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to you, and Dr. Kirk Evans. What a joy to be